Uh, Dr. Ted Bailey, Chief of Division of Infectious Diseases at GBNC with us here in the studio again. Still talking about coronavirus, doctor, thank you so much. And also want to let you know, the number to call is 410-671-0702 because we have a studio next door full of experts waiting to talk here. Take your calls. Doctor, talk to me about exposed. We've heard that recently. You know, what constitutes being exposed? Well, again, this is a, a respiratory virus, so it means you've been exposed in a way that you could have acquired the virus if, you, if, the, if the person that you were exposed to in that way had the virus. Um, so proximity to someone who would be expelling the droplets is a possibility. The more people you're around, mm -hmm. the more the likelihood that one of those people might have had coronavirus and therefore the, the greater likelihood that you were exposed. Just getting exposed doesn't mean that you would come down with the infection, mm -hmm. but it would mean that it was a possibility. So if that person tested positive and you were exposed to that person, I mean, we're talking six feet. I mean, how close do you have to be? Well, let's say you were in the, in the vicinity of the person. The, the droplets that come out, yes, one way is for them to directly land on the person. Okay. But the other thing is they can land in the environment and they can then be picked up from the environment, which is one of the reasons we've heard a lot about both covering, the, covering a cough if you're somebody who has the cough so that you're not putting the droplets out. But if you're somebody who you know, is out there, we don't want you picking that up. We don't want you touching your face, touching your mouth, touching your eyes, touching your nose. And hand washing will interrupt that. Mm -hmm. We've had a couple of cases recently where we had uh, two family members exposed or how do you care for a family member who has tested positive for the COVID-19? So, you know, it would depend on what their needs are, but you would want to limit the interaction, the close interaction between the two people. So, you know, if there's a, the person who has it mm -hmm. should wear a mask. You know, we we've, we've don't believe that masks for the people who are trying to avoid infection are of, of value in most low-risk situations. We do use them medically because the kind of contact is more intimate. But we do think that the person who has the virus should wear a mask. That's going to reduce the droplets out into the environment. The person who's taking care of them should be washing their hands, should be limiting the contact. And the things that they're touching should be cleaned you know, frequently. Mm -hmm. We've heard a lot about social distancing. You really think that that spreads the, uh, stops the spread of the COVID-19? Yeah, absolutely, because it does depend on the, the particle making it from someone who has the virus to someone who does not have it. And it's limited in its ability to travel. Um, and it's certainly, it's not acquired unless it's, it's from someone else, either directly mm -hmm. or from a surface. We talk a lot about the elderly and the immune compromise. What age, I guess, well, I hate to ask this question, but what age is considered elderly? Well, it's a continuum. One of the things that we've noticed is that the, the children seem to be the least likely to acquire a severe infection. That doesn't mean that they can't be infected, and it doesn't mean that they can't in turn spread the infection, but they seem not to get a severe one. And the likelihood of severe infection, and that's something that would put someone in the hospital, require medical support, and also put them at risk of death, mm -hmm. increases decade by decade as you go up. The highest risk groups are clearly 70 to 80, and then even more so 80 and up. And I guess it would probably consider what type of health you're in. I think one of the first groups we had was a 70-year-old couple out of Prince George's County, and they were both doing fine early on. So the other identifiable factor in whether someone's likely or more likely to have a serious version of corona mm -hmm. is going to be whether they already have some chronic health problem. Okay. And the ones that we've identified are chronic heart disease, chronic lung disease, do they have cancer, do they have diabetes? But as we learn more and more about this virus, we may be able to identify other groups that would be at identifiably higher risk, but no group is essentially at zero risk. Everyone should be concerned. All right, Dr. Bailey, thank you very much. Again, our experts from GBMC right next door in the studio taking your calls. That number to call again is 410-671-0702.